I have been learning C++ for over a year now, and this is how I went from basic console projects to accidentally working on Sea of Thieves. Yes, the AAA pirate game. It all started in my first year of university with this course. Game Engine Creation. It sounds a lot fancier, because actually we didn't do any literal game engine creation. Ha. Huh. Instead, it was a course all about C++ programming. Semester 1 of this course was meant to take us from literally knowing nothing to, well, knowing some basics about C++. More specifically, we had this long list of different projects we needed to complete. And we only had a few months to do this. Ha. Huh. Each project was focused about teaching us a specific aspect of programming, like conditionals, loops, pointers, hmm, <laughs> etc. And at the end of the month, all of these needed to be submitted to get a grade. And not fail. So that's what I did. I completed all 11 weeks of projects, submitted it, got 82%, which is actually not bad. And well, supposedly, I now know C++ basics. The second stage of landing a job at Sea of Thieves was a C++ game development course. Again, this happened at my university, and the course was going to teach me C++ gaming. I mean, how to make games using C++. <laughs> I ended up making several games using things like SDL2, OpenGL, and... well, that's about it. Now, although the games weren't great, okay, being honest, they were bad, they did teach me the fundamentals of game development that wasn't inside an engine. And this was key to me getting that job. Okay, so this is the moment when my C++ knowledge was about to skyrocket, because I dove into the world of graphics programming. You see, making games and learning the basics is important, sure, but I wanted to go further, so I decided to try and create my very own graphics engine. Actually, I did it twice. <laughs> For my first attempt, I ended up using DirectX 11 to make it. And it taught me a lot how to render things, make shaders, create UI, and how to lose my will to live in about five minutes. But one thing it did for sure was make me better at C++, and programming in general. I liked it so much I ended up repeating this and making yet another engine, this time using OpenGL. Both engines were very similar, but taught me different skills. The first one taught me the basics, because, well, I've never made an engine before that. And the second one helped me expand beyond what I already knew. And I mean, look at how cool this is. With these projects, I was able to add low-level programming to my portfolio, which was great, but also C++ was becoming my main language. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how I made these engines, I've made two videos about it, go check them out, links down below. By this point, I had made about five projects and lost my will to live 131 times. So it was probably time to give up. Nah, that would be too embarrassing. I can't do that. <laughs> At this point, I was no longer pursuing graphics programming, and instead I wanted to get high off of maths. And therefore, the physics engine was born. This was my baby at the time, because it was like slapping the graphics engine with some trigonometry, and Pythagoras, and matrices, and calculations, and calculus. You get the point. This engine was made again using the lovely DirectX, and showed off all my technical knowledge. I don't think I really had any, but still. The engine had its own collision system, rigid bodies, forces, and I know all of those already come in engines like Unity and Unreal, but it's not that easy, okay? It took me multiple weeks to do it. During this process, I kid you not, I learned so much. Both my programming skills and mathematical skills just increased, and I was so much more confident in using C++. Now don't get me wrong, the engine wasn't super advanced, but for me personally, it kind of was. And well, after completing the engine, I was ready to look for a job in the industry. Pause a minute. Okay, yeah, I say that I did this on accident. You know, I did try and apply for the job. What's the accident then? Well, the fact that a human like me should not be getting responded to. I did not plan to get the job when I signed up, and I just thought it would be a good experience. Here's what I mean. For a full year, all my professors have been drilling into my and other students' heads that we needed to apply for internships. It will be good experience, come on, it'll be fun. But see, the thing is, young me was like, nah, there's no point. It means graduating a year later, less time to play video games and be stupid on YouTube, and yeah. Because of that, I decided to not participate in this. 
But about two months in, when people in my class have already applied and even gotten some responses, I thought to myself, what if I do apply? Because at the end of the day, if they deny me, I don't lose anything since I never wanted this in the first place. But maybe if I get a cool internship, that makes it worth it. And well, here's what happened next. Okay, so the real question is how did I get from that to actually working at Sea of Thieves? Well, here's how I did that. I started applying for hundreds of different internships, most of which were in the games industry and some that were just general programming ones. Now, this was well and good, but there was a couple of issues. Most applications required me to have something called a portfolio, and I didn't know what that really was. So I needed to get that before actually applying. So from my understanding, I just needed a way to show off all the work that I have been doing. So I went the typical route of making a website, on which I showed off all of my work, not just the C++ stuff. And now I was ready to apply. Well, not really, because I also needed a CV and a cover letter. My CV was pretty basic, since at this point my only real jobs have been at KFC and a few other places like that. And the cover letter was also fairly standard. And now I was actually ready to apply. And so I did, I spent days applying to everything I saw, filling in countless applications, and at the end of it all, I just needed to wait. So at this point, multiple months have passed, and I didn't really hear anything other than silence. But soon enough, I did start getting some replies in my email. Different studios and companies replied back, asking me to attend interviews. I also got denied a lot. And so I spent the next month attending interviews, and luckily enough, one of them was with Rare, the developers of Sea of Thieves. I attended the first interview, and they seemed to like me enough because I was invited to an in-person interview. So I went to that interview. Unlucky for me, the UK seemed to have really strong winds, so my train was delayed and I was actually late to the interview. However, they still accepted me to come in and I spent the whole day visiting the studio, learning things and sitting programming tests. Which I know is really standard, but still, it's terrifying. I ended up going home exhausted and again, my trains got cancelled multiple times before I got home. But I actually got a call back the same day offering me a position. And well, the rest was history. I took the position of an intern gameplay programmer at Rare, working on Sea of Thieves. And I even managed to work on The Legend of Monkey Island. Since then, I have finished my contract at Rare, and now I'm back at university to finish my degree. So we will see what happens next. I was going to say something motivational, like this could be you someday, and don't get me wrong, it very much so can be, but it sounds a little too cringy, so I'll leave the video here. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!